Preacher, you mind your own play, Purdy's, and we'll mind iron. That is, unless you want to see your great great grandma real soon. <laughs> David, let it go. They have to finish! I have to. can't keep on like this, Dan Houston. You took such good care of Prince, I know he misses you. I can't look at him. He was the finest horse, but not no more. Sam, listen to me. You're a fine boy. No one could take that away from you by cutting your hair. And it's the same thing with Prince. He is still the finest horse there is. And we have to let him know we think so. That bird. What does it do? In the beginning, I'm ashamed to say wow. I had thought of teaching Fairlight to read as just another do-good project. Wow. But Fairlight soon changed all that. Exactly. Whatever I gave her, she more than repaid with her kindness and friendship. I've gotten more letters from my friends in Asheville about the women's crafts. <laughs> Let it be, Miss Christie. But Fairlight, the money would make such a big difference. Families come first here. Men folk provide. They take it awful hard if their women folk were to outdo them. So their pride is more important than shoes for their children? Men in the Cove set a great store by pride. If you take that away, some of them will just curl up and die. Not your Jeb. He'd see what was right. Maybe. But Jeb's just one man. I'm sorry, Fairlight. I shouldn't pressure you. You have to do what you think is right.
Thank you, Miss Christie. Christie? Dr. McNeil? They told me the preacher's hands need some tending. Thought I might take a look at those hands. They're fine. Don't lie. It's right for infection. Maybe even gangrene if it's not treated. They just came from Aunt Polly's. She's had another one of her spells. Is she all right? She seems to think she's dying. And I agree with her prognosis. She wants to see you and the preacher. Preacher, I've been needing you mighty bad. I've been wanting to talk to you. What's going to happen when my heart gives up beating? Is my spirit going to see the Lord right off? I guess people have always wanted to know that. We used to discuss it quite a bit in seminary. Preacher, you tell me what you know for a fact. Well, uh, after all, we can't experience death while we're still living. So how can we know? Even scripture seems a little confusing. My heart was sinking. Some think that I knew this wasn't what Aunt Polly was looking physical. for. Death, we go into a state of uh, unconsciousness, but then are raised up on the last day. You mean that some folks think that when we die, our spirit is kept in some sort of ice house, all froze up stiff till the trumpet sounds on that last day, and then you get unfroze? Something like that. Preacher, is that what you're believing? <laughs> Actually, I haven't, these are points I haven't quite settled with myself. Well, son, Surely you remember about Jesus telling that rascal of a thief of dying on the cross beside him, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Does that sound like any old ice house? I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just trying to be intellectually honest. Poor man. You most fracture your head, don't you, trying to be wise with it? Would you hand me that picture from the wall? Let me tell you a true tale. One spring, when the mountains was a greenin', and the grass in the pastures was half a gram high, my freeman had a hunting accident and went on afore me. My heart near about broke. No more daddy for my brood. No more chest to lay my head on. And worst of all, no more music. I loved hearing him play his old music. It tickled me pink. But you know what? No sooner had Freeman gone from his body than he was right there in the room with me. Just himself in his brown felt hat with a sprig of balsam in the band. He was laughing, easy like, and telling me as clear as ever a body could that everything was gonna be all right. There is nothing to fear. It was then I knowed for sure that death ain't nothing to be afeard of. Rest your soul on that, son, as this old lady does. <laughs>